What's going on fight fans, it's your host Sebastian and welcome back to the Boxing Tip. Now I got some pretty interesting piece of news here for you guys. Uh, if you haven't already heard, the WBO has ranked Canelo Alvarez as Billy Joe Saunders' number one mandatory. He was moved over, uh, Kurt Cedes was the previous number one mandatory. So now Canelo Alvarez is now in the number one mandatory spot to face Billy Joe Saunders for his WBO title. So how did he get there? Well, that remains unknown. Uh, being that he doesn't fight in the middleweight division unless you count his 155 pound catch weight which is technically over the 154 pound limit and is considered uh, the middleweight division at that point. But I guess we could take it as a sign that being that he has mysteriously jumped into the number one mandatory position for Billy Joe Saunders belt, uh, it's pretty safe to assume that his next fight more likely will be in the middleweight division as a full-fledged middleweight. Now, I dropped a video talking about Canelo Alvarez and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Uh, in possible talks of a fight happening between them. Maybe that would be Canelo Alvarez's first official middleweight bout. Well, 164 pounds, I think, was the catch weight that they were talking about. Uh, technically, that would make him a super middleweight um, because it's over the 160 pound limit. But nevertheless, I'm sure in May we will be seeing him fight his first fight as, you know, a full-fledged middleweight, be it middleweight, super middleweight. But uh, it, it raises suspicion because, you know, how did he just automatically f become the WBO number one mandatory when he has, you know, unless you count the catchweights, has pretty much zero fights as a middleweight. But what does seem kind of, if you kind of want to, you know, treat it like a puzzle, I guess, in a way, or like some sort of, you know, deciphering what Golden Boy Promotions intentions are, I mean, it is kind of now starting to make sense why he chose Liam Smith as an opponent for his WBO belt. Um, as we know, Vasil Lomachenko, he holds a WBO belt. Uh, he held the WBO belt at 126 and then made the jump up to face the 130 pound WBO fighter uh, Roman Rocky Martinez but there was no I don't think there was ever an official announcement that Vasil Lomachenko would be his number one mandatory but not saying that these stories are related it just seems a little similar in a way uh, especially in this sanctioning body being that you know both uh, stories are you know about the same sanctioning body uh, I have heard I've seen some theories about it you know um, that uh well one of them was that Canelo Alvarez and Os Oscar De La Hoya asked the WBO if they can be the number one mandatory for Billy Joe Saunders belt an attempt to take the belt from Billy Joe Saunders if he decides you know to fight Canelo as a bargaining chip for when him and Triple G start negotiations for their fight which I'm pretty sure that's an ongoing thing all the time maybe it's starting to seem pretty apparent that they will be facing each other in September of 2017 uh, but there's no official announcement obviously you know the situation's pretty finicky so uh, nothing is set in stone until the fight actually happens or you know at least until they officially announce it um, another theory is that um, you know Canelo's just picking off the weaker of the two belt holders um, but obviously you know that's kind of uh I don't know in a way it's kind of a shitty theory because more likely he's going to fight Triple G I don't think that his ego for one his reputation uh with the Mexican American or Mexican population will you know allow him to keep getting away with not fighting Triple G I think eventually he's gonna have to kind of just face the music and get jump in the ring with them uh, I don't think that his reputation can handle stalling the fight out any longer. Um, regardless if it's his fault or not, you know, the fight is being stalled. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's just a wait and see thing. Um, May, you know, it's pretty much around the corner being that 2017 is getting ready to start here in about another week or so. 
and then you know we got a bunch of we have an excellent first quarter of 2017 lined up with fights you know with triple g danny jacobs a lot of the showtime cards like uh thurman garcia granados broners frampton santa cruz two robert easter jr set to make it i think his first defense for the title so you know we got an excellent 2017 coming up so i guess it kind of takes the edge off of the super fight or you know for all the major canelo fans which is a huge uh majority of boxing fans possibly uh, especially the casual fan base um back canelo so maybe it gives them something to kind of chew on before they you know get the big bite with canelo getting a big fight whether that's Billy Joe Saunders or Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. or whoever else in the middleweight division that he's willing to face, you know, he's he's the money man. He's he's got the the ability to choose his fights. It's kind of shitty. I wish that really didn't happen in boxing because I would rather, you know, like how the sanctioning bodies have their rankings set up. You know, the mandatory has to, you know, the challenge, the champion has to fight a mandatory within a certain. A period of time, make so many title defenses, and yada yada yada. You know, I like I like that structure. Um, it makes it a sport. You know, in other sports, teams don't get to choose their schedule. You know, if if Chicago Bulls, because I'm you know from the Chicago land area, if the Chicago Bulls have to face the Golden State Warriors, one of the be- better teams in the NBA, do you think they get to choose whether or not they face the uh, Golden State Warriors, even if it's a for sure L? They don't get to choose. That's their schedule. It's set in stone that way. Um, I mean, I, I guess there is a little bit more flexibility in boxing, which, you know, allows these fighters to kind of, and, you know, the promoters to kind of, you know, how do I say it, make their career as convenient as possible. I guess, you know, some, you know, the fighters being, you know, this is a single man sport, you know what I'm saying? So they get to kind of choose which fights they want. But talking about, the rankings and uh, contender positions and uh, mandatory positions, and, you know, like stuff like that, you know, uh, I feel like the sanctioning bodies need to be a tad bit more stricter than they are, um, as we've seen with the uh, Triple G uh, Jacobs, you know, the WBA was setting deadline after deadline, extension after extension, none of them just kind of gripped down and said either you guys fucking make a deal or this fucking fight isn't going to happen or you guys could, you know, or whatever, however it goes, or we won't sanction the bout or, you know, something like that. I'm not saying that's how it works, but I, I, know, I understand it works a completely different way. It just, you know, there's got to be a better way to get, you know, top level competitors to fight against each other without the hassling of you know what i'm saying or being able to pick and choose well if that guy's too much of a threat for me i don't want to fight him you know but it is what it is so it's i mean it's it's a it's something in boxing that's not gonna change probably ever so you know i deal with it it's not a big deal uh just as long as you know canelo at least fights top level competition um i consider him whether anyone agrees with me or not i consider him a very good boxer whatever he does outside of the ring i mean it's not really something that i'm too interested in i don't give him a pass believe me when he vacated i was as pissed as anyone else could be but i i don't control that you know what i'm saying but when he's in the ring i do like what i see and i think most people can agree with me he, he's a pretty good boxer uh you can't take that away from canelo but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see how this situation is going to unfold. I like that it is kind of setting up something and it and it's relevant and it tells you that Canelo is going to be fighting in the middleweight division pretty much officially, you know, if he's already ranked number one in the WBO ratings in middleweight, you know, maybe we get to see a Billy Joe Saunders versus Canelo fight, you know what I'm saying, which is it's pretty sweet. It's a it's a good fight, you know, uh, both guys are pretty good fighters. Uh, I know a lot of people don't think Billy Joe Saunders is a very good fighter. You know, you got to watch him in the ring. He does do things pretty well. He is a very uh, crafty guy in the ring, um, whether you like him or not. You know, this isn't a personality contest. This is a, this is a boxing match, you know. So in the ring, when I've seen Billy Joe Saunders fight, he does do things pretty well. Same with Canelo. He, he's a good boxer. So maybe we get to see this fight. Maybe we get to see the Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight between Canelo. Uh, I know Chavez Sr. has came out and made the statement that 
Canelo isn't offering Chavez Jr. enough money, but I know Chavez Jr. is a big name in Mexico, but in recent events, he has no major accomplishments to really, you know, rely on to get him a bigger purse. So that's kind of what he's dealing with there. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders, he has a belt. And that's basically his biggest bargaining chip when it comes to Canelo. Because Canelo's the money man. Like I said, in boxing, Canelo's the money man. He's going to get what he wants. And uh, he's going to offer you what he wants. And if you don't like it, then he'll just offer somebody else. Because, you know, any fighter for that amount of money or whatever he's offering, they know they fight Canelo, they get a big payday. You know, they're not going to turn down the fight. He'll have no problem finding other fights. Uh, whether they're top level competition, I would pray that they would be, at least from here on out. Uh, no more of the Amir Khan. Liam Smith is a good boxer. Uh, I've always thought so, even before the Canelo fight. He just was not ready for the level of competition that you know Can Canelo presents. So I don't want to see any more green fighters or, or not ready fighters or the Amir Khans and shit like that. I don't want to see none of that. I want to see him fight somebody who's going to give him a challenge. Even if he doesn't give him an, a, cha a challenge in the ring, I want him to pick somebody who gives him a challenge, at least on paper. Give me something to be excited about. I'm sure all you guys can agree to that. But uh, like I said, I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Um, if I do find out anything further on the story, because I know there's a lot of people who take interest in to what canelo is doing outside of the ring you know i'll try to guy i'll try to keep you guys informed but until then you know like the video share the video with your boxing homies hit me up in the comment section all my subscribers who follow me now know that i always reply to every every comment unless i can't understand it which i mean meaning it have to be in like a different language or something uh, unless it's Spanish, then I can, you know, reply to you then. But uh, any other language, I'm going to have trouble commenting back to you. But if you drop a comment I can't understand, I still appreciate it. But for all you guys who I can't understand, drop a comment. We could talk about it. Y'all know that I'm a responder. I, I love to conversate about boxing, whether it's over the comment section. You know what I'm saying? So also introduce somebody to boxing. Y'all know that's my slogan. There can never be enough boxing fans. We need more boxing fans. If we want to get more fights, we need more boxing fans. It's as simple as that. But that's all I got for you guys for now. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Sebastian from the Boxing Tip signing out. Peace.